This is Lecture 7F on four methods of numerical integration, the right, left, and midpoint rules, and the trapezoid rule. You are already familiar with the right, left, and midpoint rules. This is just Riemann integration. In Calculus 1, we set up Riemann integration, and then we took the limit, and we called the limit the definite integral. Here, we go the other direction. We have a definite integral that we would like to calculate, and we, we calculate it approximately by using the Riemann integration. We do not take the limit. So for a refresher, here's what we do. Let's say this is your x and y axis, and I'll write, there, here's your function sitting there like that, and you want, and we're just going to use one mesh just for demonstration purposes. So here's our one mesh. So this will be x hmm, 0, and this is x 1. I understand why the pen doesn't write somewhere. That's just weird. All right. So what you need to do is what you're going to do is approximate the function with a rectangle. The rectangle will have a width h. We already set that up. That's the this distance used to be called delta x, but we call it h here in x. Now we need the height for the rectangle. For the left-hand rule, you pick a value the value of the function at the left hand, at the left fence post of the mesh. And from that, you create a rectangle, you take its area, and you say that is the area of the function in this mesh. Obviously, that wasn't too close, but, oh well. For the right-hand rule, you pick the value of the function at the right-hand side of the endpoint. That's how you set up your rectangle, because that becomes the height of your rectangle. So here's my rectangle, and here's the area. Well, this one actually, for this particular function, worked better. For the midpoint rule, of course, you would pick blue. You pick the midpoint, and that would give you the height of your rectangle. Then you multiply that height times the width h, and that gives you the area. The smaller the mesh size, of course, gives better results, but you are working on a computer to do this, and so round off error can also be a problem. So here is the mathematical statement of what we just said. We have this definite integral of this very well behaved function, and we're integrating it from a to b. We approximate it by the sum of these rectangles. And the, the rectangle has a width h, and the h is determined by the number of meshes, number of subdivisions we create between b and a. The height of the rectangle is the value of the function somewhere in each mesh. For the left-hand endpoint, it's a value at the left-hand side of the mesh. For the right-hand rule, it's a value at the right-hand side. For the midpoint rule, it's obviously a value in the middle of the mesh. Here is the function, and we've shown here the left-hand rule, not the right-hand rule. As you can see, the step size is 0 0.4. All right, each mesh, okay, has each rectangle has a width of 0 0.4, that's your h. I'm sorry, that's 0 0.4. Now the height of the rectangle is determined here by the value of the function at the left-hand side. So you use one value of the function to determine the whole area of the function in each mesh. If I'm over here, I would pick this value of the function. That would give me the height of the rectangle. I'd multiply that by h and get the area. Here, again, and continue like that. That's your left hand. And here, I've been consistently dyslexic, is the right-hand rule. So again, the size of the mesh, 0 0.4, and the height of the rectangle is determined by a value of the function, the value of the function at the right-hand side. Here I would go over to this one and use that to create the rectangle here would get zero, and sometimes you do get zero, and you just have to live with that. Sometimes the rectangles overestimate, and sometimes they underestimate the area of the function. And here's the same function. The rectangles now are determined by the midpoint rule. And now we'll look at the trapezoid rule. This trapezoid rule is an average of the right and left hand approximations. It's determined by taking the area of the rectangle is determined by the right-hand rule and the area determined by the left-hand rule and averaging them. 
So we're going to do three meshes, and I'll show you the pattern. It turns out to be a distinctive pattern for the trapezoid rule. Right here, we have the area determined by the left-hand rule. Here's the value of the function at the left-hand side of mesh number one, at x naught, times the width. So height times the width gives me the area. Okay. Here's the right-hand rule. For the trapezoid rule, I add them together and divide by two. For the second mesh, I do the same thing. And for the third mesh, I do the same thing. So what we have here for these three meshes, here's x, here, oops, here's y, okay, say this is x0, x1, x2, and x3. Right. And it doesn't matter what the function is doing in here, except it can't do that, of course. Right. And here's, here are those values of the function at these endpoints. Now look at the expression when I add all of these areas together. Here's for trapezoid rule for mesh number one. It will have x naught times h plus x, uh, f of x1 times h divided by 2. For mesh number two, I get the value f of x1 again because it is the left hand side of mesh two here it was the right-hand side of mesh number one. All right. And just continuing um, in this way up to the third mesh. I can, of course, factor out the h over 2. What I get is f at this endpoint of my integration, and then on the other end, I get f at the other extreme. In between, on those interior points, they appear, the value of the function appears twice because x1 is shared between mesh 1 and 2. x2 is shared between mesh 2 and 3. I combine those and here's my expression. h over 2 step size over 2 times the value of the function at the lower limit of integration this is really f at a plus 2 times the value of the function at all of the meshes, at all of the fence posts of the meshes on the interior and then the last term is the value of the function at the other end f at b, at the other extreme. This pattern persists beyond these three meshes. So here's the pattern for the trapezoid rule. Uh, let me write that up here so you can see that. This is your trapezoid rule. And it says we developed it. This is an approximation. You're, you have a definite integral from a to b of some function f of x. By the trapezoid rule, it is approximated by the step size over 2, and step size is determined by the number of meshes you create between b and a. You have values of the function at every value of x in the mesh, at the edges of the mesh. The extreme points occur by themselves. All the interior points are multiplied by 2. Now here's the picture of that same function with the trapezoid rule shown. It looks a lot better than the others, but actually it's not. The midpoint rule is a very, very good rule. Um, trapezoid rule here looks better. It has more complexity, but it is not necessarily a better rule, and we'll see that when we get to the errors. Usually the errors are offset in different ways. Um, one rule will give, um, will overestimate the error, the error of the function, and the other will underestimate it by about the same amount. So those are your three linear or four linear rules for approximating the area under a curve by using numerical integration. The next rule will be um, is nonlinear and uses a parabola. It's called Simpson's rule.